welcome back everyone um to today's video where tony's gonna be biting his nails um what we're gonna uh thank you all for watching today um what we're gonna be covering is uh last night uh midsummer scream put on a little hour-long live stream uh where they sat down with uh, one of the creative people behind rotten Oh man, I'm already Rotten happened. Apples 907. Rotten Apples 907, um, as well as one of the people at 1340, one of the creative people at 13th Floor, uh, did really discuss this upcoming haunt season, what that's going to look like, um, you know, both on the professional side and on the home haunt side. Um, and so, yeah, Tony, uh, what were your what were your thoughts on the live stream last night? So I wrote down a couple of notes um, as far as stuff that really caught my attention as far as what haunt season 2020 might be looking like or what's going to happen in the near future. Um, by the way, you sound like Darth Vader breathing right now. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so some points that we need to cover right now would be, of course, uh, Cal Haunts. The people who usually uh, design the um, entrance for the Hall of Shadows said that they're gonna, they're, uh, you know, they had a design ready for 2020 mid Midsummer Scream, but now that they have an extra, you know, year to prepare for, an, uh, you know, the same design and everything, that they can go back and and add more detail and and plot out more, which I think is a really cool um, idea overall. So I can't wait to see what that's gonna look like. Yeah, definitely, I agree that it's probably gonna be coming. Because now they're having two years, really, to put it into effect. Obviously, with the time lost over the last few months with this COVID crisis, you know, I'm sure they haven't had time to build. But, you know, obviously, Zoom calls can still happen. Skype calls like this can still happen. So a lot of the designing can still happen. So I imagine they're going to have a little bit more time to come when it comes down to actual build. Obviously, we know Midsummer Scream's coming a little bit earlier next year. As opposed to the end of July, early August, we're now looking at a beginning of July date. So they're, they're a little cut on that. But because they're having that extra year to prepare for the fifth year of Midsummer Scream, I imagine Cal Haunt is really going to bring it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's what we're going to see a lot in 2021, just kind of looking past 2020, is for a lot of those like home haunts that didn't get to do a haunt this year or moving to like displays or some like alternate form of it. Yeah. They're really, I feel like they're really going to bring it hard in 2021. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, so yeah, I, I did, I, I thought it was, you know, in my opinion, I thought it was really cool that Midsummer Scream both had the professional side and the home haunt side, you know, both perspectives available Yeah, um, to, to, you know, really kind of provide, you know, a look at what 2020 may look like. Yeah. What what else, what else did we learn um, from so, this live stream? We'll start with Rotten Apples. So, Rotten 907, I have never been to their home haunt, but actually after just hearing this, I, I would love to go check it out one of these days. I think it's going to be another thing for the future of uh, Knights of Horror 2. We want to start hitting more home haunts uh, just to check them out and review them for you guys. Um, I know a lot of people like checking those out. Uh, we went to uh, two last year. We were fortunate enough to get media access for kind of both of them in a way. Um, with the Bloodshed Brothers inviting me and Robert out last year to check out their two haunts, which was a phenomenal, phenomenal job um, on those haunts. So that was really cool. And I, I hope they get to continue to do a haunt this year. I mean, as we've seen on their channel, they are still building um, in, in case that they do get the okay to go. Um, as of right now, though, I mean, there is some good news right now. Uh, I, I had heard that they want to start – uh, I, I guess they're aiming for a July 4th opening for L.A. County um, to start really opening stuff more uh, up and all that. And the governor did come out recently and say that, you know, they're going to start letting restaurants go back to operational, not just curbside pickup. The same thing with Stingwood stores. They want to actually, you know, start getting people back to reality and, and normal again, um, which is good news to hear because that leans a little bit more towards um, the hope of a haunt season this year. If they're going to start lifting stuff as far as, you know, letting us go into stores um, and, and letting us go to restaurants, 
without having to, you know, take out a curbside pickup. That's kind of hopeful for, of course, a haunt season this year um, because that means that, you know, we are getting closer to the next phase of phase, getting to that phase four of opening up theme parks and reopening up, you know, more things, which is a really good sign. Um, and that looks, you know, that makes it a little bit better for as far as home haunts goes because if you guys watched the live stream last night, they're not a giant business as as they said. They're not a giant business, you know. They just put on a home haunt. They're not, you know, they don't have insurance if anything goes wrong. You know, they 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 just do this out of their own pocket and 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 time that they do. Um and what was her name? Diana, I believe was her name. From, I'm not a I'm not 100% sure on what her name was. And I I'm not the best with names. I believe I, her name was was Diane. Um and she was saying, you know, like it, it, it's it's hard enough that her neighbors already don't like her for the fact that they put on that haunt every year. Um, yet alone, you know, if they were to put on a walkthrough this year, their neighbors would obviously call the city because of the fact of COVID-19. So many people are surrounded. So they're going to be doing a a display, a really cool display, rather than a walkthrough. She also brought up the uh, an interesting fact, and I never even really thought about this. She said a display is a lot harder to design over a walkthrough. Um, which I guess it's true because, you know, you can design rooms and a lot of people would think, you know, designing rooms would probably be hard and designing a maze overall would probably be hard. I mean, I know we were going to do one this year, but I mean, just some complications happened, but we were designing stuff and I was even thinking, oh, this is kind of difficult to kind of get the flow, keep a flow going throughout a maze. But she said designing a display is a lot harder because I guess you got to design something for someone to actually look at and, and really just make people like really wood and stuff like that so that that was interesting to hear um as far I, as i think uh, on the whole display thing as well i think it's because a lot of you know you spend so time you spend so much time in the you know as haunters typically as home haunters spending so much time on building each room and thing like and everything like that yeah. whereas a display is something that's a new form of art for you now you're having to change your perspective and change the way you look at things and yeah. Okay, how are we going to do this so that people can still enjoy it and it still represents the, you know, the theming that we normally do and fits into the creative direction we normally take, but yeah. now we're having to do it as something people are going to either walk by or drive by or you know, yeah. take pictures on, you know, something which is, you know, completely different. You, know, you get so much of it, you get somewhat of it with the, you know, with the facade, but you know, a real real, you know, display is a lot different. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. And, what, and one, another thing I really enjoyed that she had brought up, I don't know if you have this noted, was really how, you know, these home haunters are really having to cross every T, dot every I, and go through every single thing. Okay, if we are going to do this, like, can we do this? What happens if one of our characters gets sick? And yeah. God forbid something deadly happens to them. Like, yeah, that's what she was bringing up a lot. Is to like, take that risk? That was a lot of that was a lot of what she was bringing up too. Is like. You know, they were they were they were talking about how they're going to do this. And she was, you know, everybody was kind of on the no side. And she was like, well, what if we can do this? But what if a lot of what ifs going on in, in meetings like that? And she did bring up a good point. What if someone does get sick? What if someone does end up dying at our haunt? You know, it's like that's just a risk we can't take, especially going back to the insurance thing. You know, if someone were to get hurt or something at a, at a theme park, they have that insurance to cover their asses and stuff. And, you know, it wouldn't be as major as if someone were to do it at, of course, a home haunt where they really don't have that, you know, insurance. They just put these on for sole purposes of entertainment, and whether you want to come through or not, that's completely up to you. Um, but, I mean, another thing that really rose in the discussion of, of Haunt Season 2020 in this live stream was um, a question that was brought up by a fan was, you know, have they figured out, especially, then this is transitioning to the, the, the main haunts that, you know, that you see, like Knott's, Halloween Horror Nights, Hayride, Queen Mary, have they figured out a way to uh, mask the actors while wearing prosthetics and masks? And as of right now, they have no solution to that. They don't know how they're going to do that. Um, transitioning over to the Hayride, which was another popular topic in 13th Floor overall. Yeah. Well, but going back to the whole mask thing, I think they kind of made the joke about, well, technically, if they already have something on their face, typically, you know, like, let's just say, for example, the she-wolf mask, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like, like still, air can come out of her mouth, um, but there's that whole snout that's really blocking, 
Yeah. You know, do you, are you really going to make them put, you know, a, a face mask on? Yeah. On top of their mask or prosthetic? Or are you going to make everyone just switch strictly to masks so that they're blocking, you know, most of their, you know, because obviously the issue is with masks is not so much um, the, you know, the look, but it's it's because of the spit. Yeah, because um, that's that's you know how some of what it can't be transferred from, a spit getting into the air or, you know, spit coming into your mouth or ears or whatever or your not your ears your nose. I don't know why I said ears. Uh, yeah. That's wild. Um, spit goes in your ears. Yeah, no, and so it, it, it's I think really the biggest the biggest thing that we got out of this is how they're gonna social distance and how they're gonna you know follow COVID nineteen you know, guidelines as far as haunt season. I mean, going back to, like, the home haunts again, I mean, when we went to the Bloodshed Brothers that was at the California Railway Museum this year, um, you know, seeing something like that is how, how they can do it. Uh, I'm hoping they get to do it. Same thing with, the, you know, our, our another favorite one that we got to uh, get some good access to was uh, the Pirate's Cave. I mean, that one's pretty close quarters too. So um, I, 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 it, it's a little harder to see if any of these home haunts will come out this year. Or if they're just going to do displays to see what's going to happen. Um, there's no time. You know, it's only time will tell. Um, but it depends what where a, we're at at that time. What, one thing I thought that was interesting that they brought up, specifically on the home hunt side, but even on the professional side, is how obviously they use fog machines in a lot of these places, you know. Yeah. Whether it be professional haunts or home haunts, you know, fog machines have a place in the the the, the maze or house or whatever you want to call it yeah. um so there's other like technology really rising up to it you know they were they had brought up this one product that you know can mask um send out you know sanit sanitation um and that's something that some home haunts are really looking into and professional haunts are looking into yeah uh, um and it's something we had mentioned a little while back when we you know as this topic has gotten more and more prevalent on what is the what does a haunt in 2020 look like? You know, yeah. we were talking and, and kind of joking like there's going to be less like scare, uh, what are those scare cloth and things like that in transitions yeah, yeah. between rooms. And you know, they kind of made that clear that that's probably something we're going to have to see losing. You know, those those walls that kind of push you in. And uh, and another thing too is the scares are going to have to look a lot different than when they normally look. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of the scares obviously are closer, like three feet. But those things are going to have to now move to probably six feet. Yeah. Um, and so it's really going to challenge the uh, the scare actors and monsters to to ch channel different ways to scare you. Yeah. Um, um, which I think many of them are up to them. You know, many of the people that we've had on the show are, are tremendous at their craft. Yeah. Um, and I imagine they'll be able to adapt and do tremendous. well. Tremendous. Tremendous. No one does it better. No one does it better than them. Tremendous people. Yes. Um, so I, I think I have faith that the and, and, and this is what I, this is what at least last night's live stream gave to me was that like I gave me hope for 2020 uh, and reminded me that when an obstacle comes in the way of the haunt community, the community is able to adapt to it and move around so that, you know, we can make what we enjoy happening, you know, our favorite time of the year come to life. Yeah. Um... So now I want to move on to, of course, the the major haunts. I mean, I I really am hopeful for home haunts because they are the kind of our get by to you know other stuff when we want to see something new after we've hit all the major haunts. You know, something new and 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 even more creative uh, is when we go to the home haunts. But let's talk a little bit about Thirteenth Floor because they gave us a ton of information, not only regarding Alley Haunted Hayride, but uh, what their state looks like as far as you know state you know countrywide um, with their with all their stuff. First and foremost, they don't see um, for all the people who listen on the West Coast or East Coast, wherever you guys are listening from, they don't see their haunt in New Orleans happening this year uh, due to of course, I guess they have it a lot worse over there than than we do. And and I guess the mayor had canceled all events uh, until January of 2021. So they really don't see their uh, New Orleans location opening up for this uh, Halloween, which was kind of sad news for that. Um, however, I this I, week, I, I I'll continue. Go on. I'll comment after. Um, however, this week they did say that they're going to be opening their Texas location. 
uh, which is a, a year-round haunt. Um, so we should see what that looks like. Maybe that will give us, and maybe they're going to do a lot of close research on this, that will give us a more understanding of how they can do a haunt season for 2020, um, and they'll get results as to how they social distance that and how they really take the precautions of the you know the COVID nineteen precautions and 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 guidelines and stuff. So maybe they're using their Texas place as kind of a research um, area to really incorporate that to their other haunts and and maybe pass down the information to other haunts to look at this is how we did things. Maybe you guys can incorporate it something different. I, I really think that the information is going to be there and and let out for other haunts so they can go on as well. And I'm I, I don't doubt in my mind that other haunts are already trying to figure out ways to really social distance stuff to really sanitize things, to really um, have everyone, you know, have the guidelines of face masks and 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 just really taking those COVID-19 guidelines really serious with the, you know, the whole temperature things and, and all that, so. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, he brought up a really good point. Um, is It's going to be a region-by-region, case-by-case scenario. Yeah. Uh, because obviously 13th floor is from California all the way through New York and the – Upper Northeast, um, and they have haunts all over the place. I know, even out here in Arizona, they have two different haunts that they have. Yeah. Um, and, the, and just in the Phoenix area, um, and you know, he was talking about his Texas location, and you know, for those who are keeping an eye on this whole COVID crisis, you know that very much like Texas and California are probably the two, ex- probably two of the more extremes. You know, where Texas is a little bit more lenient, and like they're moving towards an opening of their state rather quickly. Where California yeah. is trying to be a little bit more, let's take our time, let's see what happens. And, you know, in Texas, is like he mentioned, is opening up this week or next week. I forget exactly. Um, and so as a result, their axe throwing thing is opening back up, as well as their escape rooms. Uh, and I, I've never done an escape room, but based upon my understanding of escape rooms, usually those are very much close corridors um, and things like that. So they're going to really have to find different – and obviously there's going to be objects and props you have to interact with typically – um, and so I think they're going to have to find ways to, obviously, and I'm sure they've already worked through this. Okay, how do we sanitize between each group um, and things like that? Um, and I think the other thing he really brought up, and I know a lot of people may not be happy with this whole thing, but the idea of your virtual queues. Um, yeah, I heard about that. Well, I mean, why? Because everybody has to use an app of some sort? Is that why you think people won't be happy about it? Or Well, I mean, you have to think about, like, it depends on how they execute that virtual queue. Are they going to do the max pass system that they have in Florida for like Disneyland where it's like, you can do it six weeks out. Like, Hey, I'm going to show up on July 14th. Um, and I have a reservation for uh, tower of terror at two o'clock or whatever. Right. Or are they going to kind of do, I, I don't imagine they're going to do the whole rise of the resistance thing, virtual queue, but I think that's what a lot pass. of people yeah, yeah, where everyone – I think that's what a lot of people are thinking when they're thinking virtual queues. But I think, uh, you know – I think it will see... be more of a fast pass thing where you show up to the thing and they give you a time to come back. That way they give a certain amount of – they have a, they know how many people per time that's going to actually come in and they can actually work around that and social distance that more. No, I think – what I think it's going to be is advanced ticket sales. And when you buy your ticket, you're going to select what time, for example, you're going to go on the hayride. Like, okay, okay, I have a ticket for 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. So at 8 o'clock on Saturday night, I know I have to be there probably a half hour early to make sure I get through security, get parking, and so I can go and get my hayride done. And then from there, I, I also know I have a 9 o'clock at uh, midnight mortuary or whatever maze they have, you know. Um, so I think that's what it's going to end up turning into. Or, it may, or the other option may be looking like, okay, I know from 7 – p.m. till uh, 9 p.m. I'm allowed to be at the haunt and then there's another slot from like maybe 9 to 11 p.m. Yeah. So that you're splitting groups up that way um, and and you also also so that you can enjoy the festivities but you also have in that time your what time you're going to go on the hayride and things like yeah. that. Um, so I, I think that's what it's going to end up looking like because I think what they had mentioned um, on the live stream was they were already having issues last year with, you know, super long lines of people complaining that they didn't get to really enjoy the haunt because they had to spend two hours in that hayride line because yeah. they weren't there at the break of dawn, you know, like we were. Yeah. As soon as it opened, that was, we knew, okay, boom, we have to go get in line for the hayride. And we were, what, like the second or third group on to get yeah. 
So, and that's right. another thing. That's another thing that came up in the, uh, the the live stream Rick West asked last night is how is social distancing going to be incorporated onto the ride? As of right now, they don't have an answer for that um, because if you guys do know the hayride or any hayride at that matter, um, you sit really close to people. They, I think they lug like anywhere from 20 to 30 people on that thing right there. And you guys are like literally sitting Indian style in a batch of hay – like near people. So the, the biggest question that came out of that was how are they going to social distance that? Are they going to have to limit how many people they put on each hayride? How are they going to exactly do that uh, come time haunt season? The only answer he gave us right now, he goes, we don't know where this crisis is going to be as far as when we get there. So as of right now, we don't really have an answer for that. We're still trying to figure things out. Um, and we, we don't know what will be happening. So they have no idea. As of right now, the overall kind of theming of that was there's no idea what the LA Haunted Hayride will be come time opening. Like they don't know where it will be at, you know, as far as if they're going to be opening or not. Because you got to remember, Haunted Hayride is at Griffith Park. They literally set up in a corner and set up their haunt and like within like a couple of weeks. And it set up and stayed there for a little bit. So come time uh opening hopefully we get a haunted hayride but let's 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 kind of transition into some good news that came out of that um live stream um as far as the hayride went because we got a little bit of somewhat of an announcement from the hayride which was really good um and a little bit of a tease as to what's going to be coming for 2020 if the hayride does open up and that is of course Midnight Falls has been confirmed to return to the event, which was awesome. They confirmed that this is going to be a multi-year story that they want to tell, um, changing up something every year, which I think is a great idea, um, especially if you can expand that lore on Midnight Falls. There's more uh, – from what Chris told us, there's a lot more they can tell, a lot more they want us to share story-wise. Um, and that starts with a new maze that's going to be based around a popular character. Um it's going to really dive more into the backstory of Midnight Falls, so I'm really excited about that. So the first thing that came to mind when I thought about that new maze around a popular character was Reggie. Falls Diner. It Falls better be Diner. Falls Diner. So I, I really think, I, from what I saw footage-wise and from what I when I talked to AJ, Reggie was just probably the most popular character at Haunted Hayride. I mean, I think all of them had their, you know, level of popularity, but I think Reggie with his, you know, go with attitude and his, you know, you know, go for it, you know, kind of attitude and 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 just his excitement and happiness of Halloween and stuff was the most popular character at the Hayride th this past year. So, and you know, we we heard a lot about the Falls Diner, a lot a lot about the Falls Diner and I think that would be a really smart thing to really explore the backstory of where the fall what the Falls Diner is. Maybe there's something weird going on at the Falls Diner as well. Uh, maybe we could look at Reggie, you know, messing with people's foods and stuff, you know. So the the famous pumpkin squash uh, soup, uh, that'd be hilarious. So I am really excited to see what they keep doing. I mean, now that we got a confirmation that Falls Diner – or not Falls Diner, Midnight Falls will be there for a couple of years to continue telling the story and backstory of what Midnight Falls is and maybe explore more of that lore of how Midnight Falls became to what it is. I mean, with the curse, you know, with Halloween and stuff. So I'm really excited that this will be returning. I can't wait to learn more about Midnight Falls. So that was some really good news coming out of this, um, a really good tease. That, you know, usually at Midsummer Scream, we get a lot of this news. So I, I, I am glad. And from what Rick West said last night, I don't think this is not going to be the only podcast he does or, you know, live stream that he does. I think we'll get more of these as time goes on, maybe hearing from bigger haunts uh, to see where everyone's at. I mean, we got the start, of course, with the home haunt side and the 13th floor team, which I thought was really cool. So, I mean, we got a little bit of news on Haunted Hayride. Uh, we got a little bit of news of what 13th floor uh, is looking like countrywide. And we got, of course, news on what the home haunt state looks like. So there was a lot of information in this. And if you guys um, really want to uh, check this out, it is actually, I think, still on YouTube. So you can go back and watch it uh, to see if we've missed out anything. And if you guys want to see it for yourself, it is on YouTube. Very well put together. Um, and I hope they do do more of these, invite like, you know, more, maybe some knots people on. Maybe, uh, I, I know there's a big thing going on with Queen Mary right now in, in the haunt community as far as people think it's getting canceled. People think the Queen Mary's shutting down. I don't know how that's at, but it'd be cool to invite Queen Mary people on to kind of address those rumors and uh, set, you know, set it straight once and for all. It'd be cool to, you know, invite on um, Chris Williams and John Murdy 
well, that would be really cool. Um, you know, all these haunts. Maybe I, I, there was rumor that Horror Made Here is coming back this year. So if Warner Brothers wants to come on and and really share some insight on what what their whole view is on this, um, that would be cool. So thank you guys so much. I mean, Sammy, do you have anything? Any yeah. final words you want to say? Oh yeah, yeah. I got a couple things. Uh, before we before we get this uh, things uh, done with, um, is one. I think I think we got to look into uh, more of the cookbook. Um, and how it's done. And, cookbook. You know, you know we always go out with the cookbook, bro. The cookbook, man. The I cookbook is here to stay. Here. The fucking cookbook. <laughs> I think I think Thirteenth Floor is still keeping that, keeping true to the cookbook and the recipes that it it 13th, offers of like man. Thirteenth uh, Floor and Plank, you know, obviously working together on yeah. uh, Haunted Hayride. Of uh, okay, let's stick to the cookbook. Let's change one or two things a year. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have something good. Let's. We can expand the story. You know, bring yeah. more backstory in. Maybe yeah. add a new character so that we haven't seen. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's you know, Knotts is doing that. Uh, yeah. Queen Mary's doing that. Alley Haunted Hayride's doing that. We got the you cookbook know, everywhere now, dude. Let's just have it at Horror Nights now. Uh, and you know what? I'm fine that the cookbook isn't at Horror Nights, but that's something we can talk about later. That's something um, we can talk about. Um. But so I think that's. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they could take maybe a couple recipes from the cookbook, but, I, but you know, I don't want to see the cookbook, you know, done everywhere. Yeah, because um, I think the cookbook is special when done in small quantities. Yeah. Um, um, and it takes. I think Murdy's doing a good job with what he's doing. Yes, and yes. I, and looking ahead, I don't know how much longer he's going to be doing the Horn Nights, but that's once again when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. And figure out how to cross it as a, a haunt community, but I think Thirteenth Floor really proved that they're really sticking to that cookbook, um, and as well as you know, with changing a few things, I would love to see a Falls Diner. I think it would. I think if it replaced Trick or Treat, although I think Trick or Treat does have a very special place in what LA Haunted Hayride has been previously. Yeah, you know, people enjoyed it. I would say it wasn't that great last year. It had cool moments, but a lot of it was like you could miss a lot of those moments because of pacing and things like that. Yeah, um, and that would be really cool because I think Midnight Mortuary has to stay because it was really good. Yeah, they can either replace Trick or Treat or uh, Roadkill Ranch. I want to see them do better at Roadkill Ranch next year. Yeah, uh, I want to, and I think it lends itself really well to this coming year should they keep it because. Yeah. It eliminates one of the biggest barriers is that one is literally outside. I mean, so much – so is trick-or-treat yeah. being outside. Um, so, I mean, they could maybe stick with trick-or-treat to keep it outside so that you have a lot less buildings to go through. Um, and, you know, you don't have to worry about, like, scare cloth places and things like that and people touching too much stuff. Yeah. Um, so maybe – now that I think about it, maybe they will keep trick-or-treat and they'll replace uh, Roadkill Ranch. But I really yeah. want to see Roadkill Ranch stay – because I really want to see parkour 101 classes all over those hay bales. Yep. Um, I mean, I think that's what we both wanted last year, and unfortunately, I think, that's what we, I think we saw a little bit, but not as much as we were hoping for. We were hoping for, yeah. Um, and so I, or else they added make it four mazes, which I'm all fine with. If you're going to replace one, okay. But if yeah. you add a new one and you keep all of them, great, even yep. better. Let's have more opportunities. Um, but I don't know what that's obviously what that's going to look like. And I think, you know, it kind of gave me hope, but also kind of was dissatisfying that like 13th floor is kind of basically at the point of, we don't want to commit to anything, which I respect because they have to be in that position. And, you know, and he kept saying, I, if I had a crystal ball and can tell you what's going to happen, I would tell yeah. you, but it's an ever changing thing. And day by day, week by week, month by month, everything's changing. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's basically where I think what we learned from it. Um, based upon my last check, it is all over every social media. You can watch the video, yeah. Whether it be Twitter, Facebook, it was on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram. I think it was YouTube. on Instagram. YouTube. Yeah. I know YouTube for sure. I watched it on YouTube. So yeah, I was watching it on YouTube as well. But I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw it on there and Facebook yeah. for sure. Um, so if you guys want to watch it, check it out. I kind of hope they do do more. Um, but I'm imagining Knox is not going to do it. Because they have their own event, and they're probably going to stick to that. Yeah, uh, but they still go to Midsummer Scream, so I think we'll get little something. I don't think we'll get like a lot from Knots, and we didn't really even get a lot from Hayride. But yeah. 
I think Knotts will still come up and just give a you know an update as to where they are as far as all this. I think that's what Rick West is really trying to do is just get yeah. an update from everyone as to what's what's it looking like this year for everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's what these podcasts are more for, or these live streams is just to really get an insight of what haunt season looks like this year. No, I, I agree. I think, and I think based upon my, I was I was actually satisfied with it. I don't know if you were. Yeah, but I was quite satisfied that he was like, okay, let's bring two different perspectives. Um, you know, the home haunt experience, you know, someone that's been doing it in a while, so you got rotten over there. Um, and then 13th floor, a nationwide company that's doing this um, and doing it well, um, yeah. in my opinion. Um, and so let's bring both their perspectives, both the, the amateur and professional site, quote unquote. Um, and let's see, like, you know, how it's impacting them, how they think 2020 is going to look and how do they, uh, what do they, you know, what do they anticipate change is going to look like? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, and I think, you know, like I had mentioned earlier, like, I think it really shows how, uh, you know, the perseverance of the Hong community of, we have this obstacle, and we're going to get through it as best as we can. And we're yeah. not going to say no until we absolutely have to say no. Definitely. I think it's a good way to end it right there, man, is just really on a positive note is, <laughs> you know, we, they are trying to do what they can, you know, admits COVID-19. And we are really trying to work around uh, what, this pandemic is doing for not only California, but for the world. Um, so, I mean, it's, it, it gives me hope that we're seeing Shanghai Disney open up. We're seeing Universal uh, City Walk over in Orlando opening up, Disney Springs, which is basically their equivalent to downtown Disney opening up. Um, it was great news today to hear that the governor is planning on opening a lot more stores and restaurants here in California up for people not only just to get takeout, but actually go in and enjoy and, and eat. So it's really cool to start seeing little by little we are we are still f- trying to figure this out, but at the same time we're still trying to get back to normal. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and then even the of- even LA County going with you know maybe July fourth is what we're going to open with. Yeah, uh, and I, I don't think we can ever stress this enough. Keep staying to the course, everyone that's watching this. You know, yeah. keep being careful um, because I think as we as we as we've keep completely shown, I think as long as we remain steady to the course, you know, wearing our face masks when we go out, making sure to only go out when necessary. I yeah. think, you know, we're going to, I think we have a good grasp on COVID at this point. Definitely. And if, if we want to see a victory and if we want to see that haunt season, then we just got to keep being careful um, and yeah. doing what we're told. And, um, you know, I, I know it's difficult, you know, staying in your home and doing these things, but like, I think you just got to keep the whole bigger picture in mind and uh, remember that, a day, a couple of days sacrificed here can go a long way in the uh, overall keeping grasp of things. But is there anything, the last things you can say before we close this out? That's it, man. I mean, you said it best. Uh, we we covered all the basic, you know, big points out of that out of that live stream. So we're hoping that Midsummer and Rick West do more. We would love to, of course, watch more and and take our notes on this because it is a good insight to see where everything's at. So thank you guys so much for watching our little recap as to what uh, we thought of the first ever, you know, Midsummer Scream. Uh, kind of live stream panel that they had. Uh, we really enjoyed, you know, recapping this and giving our thoughts on it and what we thought. And I think the biggest news out of all that, uh, as far as haunt season goes and announcements goes, was Hayride bringing back Midnight Fall. So that is definitely good news that we're going to be seeing that again and getting more backstory and a new maze. So um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror as well as be sure to be subscribed and that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video because we are not only just putting up haunt videos, we do podcasts, uh, Tormented Society. We're very good partners with them right now, doing a lot of coverage on them. Um, And we got a new series that uh, we just announced today called Maze Treatments that's going to feature a ton of YouTubers premiering June 3rd. So we really hope you guys stay around to see that, and uh, we will see you guys on the flippity flip. Peace.